<laughs> this is this is the cat the cat. Office of the State Treasurer's chart of cash management since 2001, so for the last 10 years. So you can see about 1.5 million is the lowest. So this orange bar is invested in CDs up to 10 years in term, but the average around two and a half to three years. Um, congratulations. Uh, they divide, the, the Treasurer's office divides the cash into two categories. One is uh, liquidity, which is this amount, which needs to, that, that's the money that we always have to have that flows in and out to pay the state's bills. You know, the cash comes in, but we still have to pay the bills, the cash goes out. And they basically clear the account that it comes in every day to make the best use of that money. So there's a liquidity side, but then there's also a core capital side. The core capital side is what we can use to uh, capitalize the bank with. So um, this is what we're talking about. So when the treasurer argues we don't have any core capital, any money, because we need it all for liquidity, that's not necessarily so, and his own cash management team showed this to us during our task force hearings this summer. Yes? I remember uh, about five or six years ago, uh, Greg Barber introduced the concept of the rainy day fund, and there was an argument about it, and then the channel went out, and I was actually voted against that. I actually voted against the rainy day fund. Oh, you did? Yes. Because there's two answers to this right now. Number one, about the rainy day for itself, but the second piece is, since we have it, should we use it to capitalize the trust? Yeah. Yeah. The first reason I think that we shouldn't have done it is because, number one, it required to put a constitutional amendment to it. So what it has is a ratcheting effect down on the state's budget. If we have to continually put, take money out of the revenues and set it aside and we can't use it, except for a 60% vote, then it just keeps ratcheting the budget down because every year we have to take 1% out of the, the revenues and set it aside. So it's basically a Republican ploy to ratchet the budget down. Um, I think that we should use more fiscal discipline. Well, they would argue we don't have fiscal discipline. That's why I'm, that may be true. But still, if we have to fund programs, we have to fund programs. And if we can't, we have to figure out how we can. That's different, a different question and a different solution than just forcing us to ratchet down when people get really hurt every time we ratchet it down. Oh yeah, well you understand the problem then. So I voted against that actually, for that reason. But since we do have it there, I would argue that we should be using that money to put it into capitalized the Washington Investment Trust. Then we're leveraging that money. It's not just sitting there as investments that banks are getting money off of. Yeah, so, okay. Um, and this is another program that the Treasurer's <coughs> Office manages. It's called the Local Government Investment Program. As you can see, there's liquidity in that program too, but there's also core capital there. Now this money belongs to the local governments who use the treasurer's office to invest their money for them. Um, but part of that investment could be the Washington Investment Trust as well. <clears throat> and you can see how the local government investment program is invested currently. So, you know, treasury bills, CDs, they they, they spread the money around. There's really, I, I think, no reason why not to put some of that into the investment trust. Okay, it's not other capitalization options. So I could talk about other capitalization options for the day fund as well. Uh, all of these separate lending programs that have core amounts within them, like the housing trust fund, which is separate from the, the general fund, uh, can be used to capitalize it too. In fact, you know, we just, this past session, um, are you familiar with the Wenatchee Public Facilities District bailout? 
Well, if you're not, real quickly, what happened was the city of Wenatchee and other cities in the area, NTA, uh, East Wenatchee, I think Quincy, some of those cities, they banded together and formed a public facilities district and then they built a stadium or whatever it is that they built over there, okay? Um, they didn't do a very good job of financing it at the time because Wall Street was in the middle of the crash. So what they did was they they did some real short-term financing that had a balloon payment at the end. So the balloon payment was coming due. They didn't have the money to pay it and they weren't willing to raise their taxes to raise the money to pay it. So miraculously, the Office of the Treasury came up with about $42 million when he said he didn't have any and said, let's bail them out with this. So we found $42 million and were willing to give it to them and then they would repay us over time, yada yada. I would argue that had we had the Washington Investment Trust up and running at this point, we could have put that $42 million into the trust as equity and then we could have leveraged that money so that not only could we have bailed out Wenatchee, but we could have probably put out about $420 million total of infrastructure loans to other municipalities. That's the beauty of having your own Washington Investment Trust. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you can leverage the money to do the work that you need to get done. So uh, there are capitalization options out there. So to address the objections is, I think that what we have is constitutional. We've got the capitalization options, but the way that the bill is structured, the bill doesn't mandate what those capitalization options, which one we'll use. It creates a governance structure who will come back with a recommendation to the 2013 legislature for implementing legislation. So as most banks start up, uh, they have what they call organizing committees. So this bill creates an organizing committee, it's an uh, implementation committee, I can't remember the specific title that, that we gave them, to come up with all the details. The, the bill itself just creates the framework for the trust. The organizing committee will come up with all the operating details, make recommendations to the governing body, which is a, the a Washington Investment Trust Commission. And the commission, the top governing fiduciary, are three statewide electeds. It's the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the state treasurer. Those three are statewide elected people, so they're accountable back to the voting public for any actions that they take. So that is the key piece of accountability on this, is that they are directly elected by the people. Sure. Uh, but the way that the state treasurer manages cash is that it invests some of it, the core capital piece. And for the liquidity piece, they, um, they bid it out. So Bank of America was the sole bidder this last time. The other banks apparently didn't think it was worth their while, which it may not be. Um, but it, um, we get, because we have our money there, they owe us interest on that money, but they're also charging us for the services, liquidity, so they give us a credit on how much they charge us against the interest that they're going to pay us back. And that total last, in 2010, was a net $4 million back to the state. So that's, that's all that we got out of that. As opposed to if we were able to use some of those deposits as lending um, capital, then we could, at least the core piece of it, we could not only, we, we would be sacrificing the interest rate of return on that core capital as it's invested now, but we would be getting not just the uh, interest rates of return back on all the different loans that that provided, leveraged, up to 10 times, mind you, because that's what banks do, plus all the sales tax revenue and the multiplying factors. So you can see how banks make money uh, by leveraging this way. That's what the state could be doing, too.